Like I said, Brother Michael <clears throat> never professes to be a preacher. When they ask me, I say, well, I'm, I'm still trying to perfect helper of the faith. Brother Clifford, I'm still, I'm still trying to, <clears throat> I'm still trying to figure out helper of the faith. I'm still trying to perfect helper of the faith. So <clears throat> when I stand here, like so many times before, in, in front of all of these great men of God and such a wonderful people of God, then I'm, <clears throat> uh, I'm totally at the mercies of God because I'm amongst real preachers I'm amongst real preachers you had one here this morning you had one here up here just a minute ago I don't need to try to explain to you you already know how these men can preach you already, you already know if it was a competition thank God it's not thank God it's not a competition brother Matthew because if it was a competition brother Michael be in a heap of trouble already and uh, of course, and if you come here to see him, how disappointed you must be already. So praise God. <clears throat> but Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. And he has a storehouse. We have nothing. But he has a storehouse that is full and overrunning. And he can open the windows and the doors to that storehouse. And he can flood us with beautiful, beautiful things of God. There's not anything that Brother Michael could say to you that would benefit you. To start out with, let the record be established that he don't know anything. And if he doesn't know anything, then it stands the reason there's not anything that he could say to you that would benefit you. But again, there's one that has a storehouse. There's one that has a storehouse. I want to pray with you for just a second. And uh, it's not going to be one of them 45-minute Brother Michael famous prayers. Lord, be willing. I just want to pray with you for just a minute. And uh, let's just pray and ask God, <clears throat> ask the Lord to speak to us. Jesus, wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Almighty God of heaven today, this evening, Father, thou who has declared the heavens thy throne and the earth thy footstool, O oh God, this evening we call upon you. Father, as we step back into the shadows and prepare to come absent, become absent, O oh God, then we call you to come and stand in front of the cameras, Lord Jesus, because we're not here to be seen. As we prepare to zip it up, God, then we ask you to come and speak and be a mouthpiece, Father. Speak to your children because we're not here to be heard. So as we prepare to step aside, to zip it up, we ask that you come forth, stand in front of the cameras and speak to your people, Jesus. To the ones that are sitting here that counted it a worthy cause, Oh, God, be with them. Keep them and bless them today. So many other places they could be. You can look at the crowd in here, and that's easy to see. Lots of other places they could be, but they counted it a worthy cause. Oh, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, Father. Without you, we are so much more and less than nothing. But it is that, it is that sweet anointing that breaks the yoke. It is established, Father, already that you have graced us with your presence and anointed the house already. Still yet again, we ask you to come once more with a special and a grand appearance, Father. Oh, God, right now that you would overshadow us with that same Shekinah glory. Oh, God, that you overshadowed Mary with. Hallelujah, Adam and Eve. Father, right now that you would overshadow us with that Shekinah glory. Oh, Father, 
Oh, that the angels of God would encamp around about us right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are lost without you. In the name of Jesus, right now, Father, we ask that you come and speak to your children. Oh, God, that you anoint your word, that you speak to your children right now, Father. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, Father, we love you. We honor you. We worship you. We magnify and esteem you, Father. You said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. So we lift you up, Father, right now. Oh, Father, replace ourself with yourself, Father. In the name of Jesus, right now, speak to us. We are commanded to be both hungry and full at the same time, Father. Speak to me. I have an unquenchable thirst and an undying hunger. Feed me, Lord Jesus. Speak to me. Speak to your children. Right now, we shall be ever so careful to give all praise, honor, and glory to thee, for truly thou and thou only are worthy. In the lovely name of your Son, Jesus, and all together, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to ask a couple of these brothers here. Ask a couple of these brothers here to help me uh, with a couple of scriptures. Brother Matthew, Brother Greg, Brother John, a couple of them. I just got a couple of scriptures right here. <coughs> Brother Michael's <coughs> eyes are not what they used to be and I fought the reading glass thing for a long time I fought the reading glasses so I went to the bigger print Bible and, and uh, finally went and got some reading glasses and still I got some right here still didn't like to use them so I went to the bigger print Bible and the bigger print I'm in the giant print Bible and still got the reading glasses up here and uh, <clears throat> I could probably make I can probably um, but I, I like to get a couple of the brothers to help me if they will I want of you pull up uh, 2 Timothy 3, uh, 3 through 5 there. <clears throat> one of you get Titus 1, 15 through 16. <clears throat> now get three of them to help me there. And one of you get Matthew 17. Uh, one of you get Matthew 7 and 16. So that's uh, 2 Timothy 3. 5 through 7, Titus 1, 15 through 16, Matthew 7 and 16 through 20. <clears throat> now, Brother Greg spoke of a couple things this morning. Well, he got up here this morning and preached his heart out, bled his heart. What a message. What a message. There is no way to add to that. There is no way. But that's what we're to do. We're to build on. <clears throat> We're to build on the things of God. That's what we're to do. We're to build on the things of God. He said some things this morning. He did not know that some of the, the very scriptures that he quoted were the very scriptures that the Lord were dealing with us about. We just pulled one of them up here, and there was one of the very scriptures. I got somebody to help me this evening and <clears throat> pull them up, and uh, there were some of the very scriptures that he, and he spoke this morning, and he... <clears throat> He gave us a title. Praise God, Brother Stan. <clears throat> he gave us a title. He said, you are fruit inspectors. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, oh, bless God, Brother Michael. We finna get him now, ain't we? No, we finna get us. Hallelujah. We finna get us. Praise God. <clears throat> Brother Greg spoke this morning and the anointing of God was so beautiful and so strong. He said, we're fruit inspectors. You are fruit inspectors. And I thought, oh, my, boy, immediately God bronzed that across the tables of my heart. And I said, my, 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 what a, as Brother Jonathan McKinney would say, whoo, that'll preach. That'll preach. Praise God. That'll preach. So <clears throat> this, is what, this is what God has made us. This is what God has made us. God has made us fruit inspectors. How many knows what a fruit inspector does? Come on. 
How many knows what a fruit inspector does? What's he there for? He's there to come through and inspect the fruit, find the rot, <clears throat> find the bad stuff, get rid of it, replace it with the good stuff, and to make sure you ain't getting nothing that's bad for you, <clears throat> and to make sure that everything is wholesome and up to standard. Grade A inspection. How many's got one of them scriptures? You got Matthew? You got Titus? Okay. You got Timothy? He's got Timothy. Okay. Matthew's the one about the fruit, saying it. Let's go to Matthew first. Let's, uh, that's, that's Matthew 7. We're going to read 16 through 20 there. I want you to listen to these scriptures because we're going to be referring back to them and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to try to move real swiftly and we're going to be re referring back to the scriptures. And uh, Go ahead, brother. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yes, listen. Hallelujah. Now that's two verses there. And six, I went ahead and go 16 through 20, so you get the whole picture there. But in, I believe in verse 16 and 20, both uh, worded just a little bit differently. It says, by their fruits you shall know them. You shall know them by the fruits they bear. In both verse 16 and 20. Okay, let's go to uh, the other one there. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy. That's, uh, that's verse 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 3, 5 through 7. <clears throat> Listen carefully. Did you hear? Did you hear the scripture that the man of God quoted this morning? A form of godliness. Ever learning. Never coming to the truth. Ever learning. Never a form of godliness, but denying the power therein. <clears throat> Read the other one, brother. The one in Titus. Did you hear that? Yeah. Said so to the pure, all things are pure. To the unpure, nothing is pure. Right. Even their hearts, even their minds are defiled. It said with their mouth, they profess it. But with their works, they deny it. Now I wanna I know everybody's expecting Brother Michael to head down one street because he's uh, his reputation precedes him. Everybody's expecting him to head down one street, but that's not the point that God's wanting to make this this, a, this afternoon. God's not wanting to beat up on anybody. He's not wanting to beat up anybody. That's not the point that he's wanting to make. He's not, he's not. <clears throat> but there is some things he wants you to understand. Now, everybody knows that I've been known to cut cartwheels with the best of them. I can get up here and turn, and we may, be, we may just do some of that before it's over with. I hope so. 
Amen. We may cut some cartwheels, but you know I can get up here and hoop and holler and jump up and down and cut some cartwheels and beat you over the head with everything that I can pull up in here. And when I get down and get through, uh, you know, you're just going to be aggravated and offended and, and I ain't going to know much of nothing that I said. Or we can take our time for a few minutes and try to teach you a few things right here and try to help you understand a few things right here that will be profitable to you. The Word of God says right over in here that all doctrine, is pro uh, all Scripture is profitable for doctrine. <clears throat> so we can take a, a few minutes here and try to help you understand some things and help you. Uh, there's two sides of the Scriptures that you're hearing here. The fruit inspector, there's, there's, there's two sides of, <clears throat> there is a side that we all know, God, he, there's a side that he, <clears throat> he is bringing out the holiness and the standards. That's, that's, I mean, that's obvious enough. That's obvious enough. But there is another thing that God is trying to get us to understand. <clears throat> he is trying to get us to understand that all of the problem is not in the, Others out there that we're trying to inspect. <clears throat> He's trying to get us to understand that all of the problems are not in the ones that we're trying to inspect and the ones we're trying to find a rod in and the ones that the ones we're trying to how many understand and how many really knows and really understands what these scriptures are saying to you? How many knows and understands what these scriptures mean to us? How many really knows and understands what they mean to us? Well, I can see that some of you don't. Uh, some of you do. I can see that some of you don't. We want to take a few minutes and try to help you understand. I said a fruit inspector. A fruit inspector, God bless your word, Jesus. A fruit inspector is somebody that goes in and he looks over the fruit. And it says, you shall know them by the fruit that they bear. You know, it's obvious enough, <clears throat> it's obvious enough, obvious enough when he starts checking the fruit, it's obvious enough where there's bad places. It's obvious enough where there's bad places. That don't take no talent. That don't make him a fruit inspector. That, I walk in there and I see that. Brother Clifford walks in there and he looks at the peaches and the apples and he sees the bad places. That don't make him a fruit inspector. But knowing what to do about it, uh, now, knowing what to do about it, this is what makes him a fruit inspector. It is his job to go in there and determine where this is coming from. It's his job to go in there and determine where this is coming from and get to the root of the problem. And to get it out of there so it doesn't infect and replace it with the good stuff. The good stuff that's going to be healthy for you. The good stuff that's going to be good for you. Now the Word of God instructs us emphatically from Genesis to Revelation that we are in fact our brother's keeper. Does it not? I don't like that, Brother Michael. He had to take it up with him. I didn't write it. I didn't put it in there. You'll have to take it up with him, but it still instructs us that way. It still, it still instructs us that way and it instructs us that we're in fact our brother's keeper. <clears throat> well, why is that, Brother Michael? Well, God done this to make sure that there was no big eyes and little U's. There was no peon. There's no, how many knows that? There's no peons in the mind of Christ. There's no big eyes and no little U's. There's no peons. There's no... God done this so that nobody gets left out. So that there cannot be my four and no more. Because so many of us, that's what we would do. We would pick my four and no more and we would take care of our own household, our own family. We would make provisions for, for the flesh. See, we make no provisions for the flesh. That's what we would do. We would make provisions for our four and no more, and we would go to them first, and we would take care of them. If there was anything left over, we might uh, be merciful just a little bit, but God's got it set up differently. <clears throat> He's got it set up differently. 
He's got it set up where your brother is your salvation. Come on, listen to me now. He's got it set up where your brother is your salvation. He's got it set up where your brother is your doorway. He's got it set up where, now, how many knows that Jesus was the doorway? The door that John saw open in heaven up there. The door that John saw suspended up there. How many knows that Jesus at Calvary there was that open door? Yes, Jesus at Calvary there was that open door. He was that open door that John saw. <clears throat> now the word of God tells us that we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Is that right? Is that what it tells us? It tells us that we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Well, then what does that make us? That makes us an open door, does it not? That makes us an open door. You know what that means? That means that I'm not going anywhere unless I go through Brother Don. I'm not unless I go through Brother Matthew, unless I go through Brother Clifford, unless I go through Brother Greg, Brother Richard. See, the Word of God has declared that we are an open door. That means that I must go through my brethren. But that means that my brethren must come through me. I know that don't land good. I know that don't land good. I didn't write that either. I didn't put that in there either. Bless God, your name in there, Brother Michael. Oh, yes, it is too. Praise God. It's all over the book. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, I cannot go through without going through Brother Greg. The Bible, the Word of God says, if you come up any other way, you curtain crawlers, hallelujah, curtain climbers, you go in a window, in a back door, any other kind of way, you'll be found without a wedding garment, cast in the outer darkness, there is not but one door. There is one door and only one door. He said that I might be what? The first of many brethren. You are bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh that I might be the first of many brethren. So if he was the first of many brethren, he was the open door hanging there. We're bone of his bone. That makes us the open door. We got to go through one another. Well, Brother Michael, what is the point? What are you getting at? The point that I'm getting at is that we don't like that. Listen to me. The point that I'm getting at is we don't like that. Everybody's still trying to make their own door. Everybody's still trying to make their own way. Everybody's still trying to get around that. Everybody's still trying to get around that. Well, Brother Michael, what if I, what if I look at my brother and things don't look right there. Here we go. What if I look at my brother and things don't look right there? What if I see some bad stuff in his life there? What if I see some problems there? This is where God has made you a fruit inspector. This is where God has made you a fruit inspector. Do you know what your job is? <clears throat> Come on. Listen to me now. Do you know what your job is? The Word of God says that with their mouth, they profess Him. But with their works, they deny Him. Do you know what that means to deny Him with your works? Well, I guess you're telling me everything that I do that's fun and everything that I do that's entertaining and everything that I like is, is denying Him and makes me bad. No, it's a whole lot more about what you're not doing than it is about what you're doing. He's a whole lot more concerned about what you're not doing than what you are. Now, I can tell you this much. If you're not doing what you're doing and what you're doing is wrong, then you'll be doing what you need to be doing, which is right. Because you're doing so much of what you're doing that is not correct and accurate in the sight of God, then you're not doing what he needs you to be doing. Did you understand that?
because you're doing what you want to do and you're not doing what you were told to do and instructed to do, then you're not doing what he needs you to do. He's a whole lot more concerned about what you're not doing. Now, there's been enough preaching to save the world over four times. But the problem is, is God needs teachers. He needs teachers. He needs teachers to instruct his people. He needs teachers to instruct his people. Now, each one of us, as I was saying a while ago, each one of us was given a special commission. Not a suggestion, not a recommendation, not a request. It was a, it was a commission. It was a direct commandment to carry the gospel to every living creature. Brother Michael, what, what if I see my brother, you saying that he's my door, what if I see my brother and he's got things in his life there that, that I don't agree with? Brother Greg was showing you some beautiful demonstrations over here this morning with a young man. What if he's got things in his life that I don't agree with? <clears throat> you know, how, what, uh, how, how am I supposed to through him? How is he supposed to be an open door for me? First of all, you're supposed to know him after the Spirit. First of all, you're supposed to know him after the Spirit. If you know him after the Spirit, you're not going to be digging for dirt. <clears throat> if you know him after the Spirit, you're not going to be digging for dirt. You're going to be looking for the good in your brother. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you spend about 97% of your time trying to clean up your own house and the other 2.5% of your time looking for the good in your brother, guess what? That don't leave much time to dig for dirt, does it? So listen to me now. It is your job. It is your commission. It is your job when he says carry the gospel to every living creature. That don't mean get up there and yell at them and throw things and beat them over the head with the Bible. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says without wholeness, no man shall see the Lord. We all know that. It's been, that's been preached to us. We've preached it every other in here. has preached it a thousand times. It's come at you from every form, every fashion. And we, we know that. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. <clears throat> but God wants us to understand that he gave to each and every one of us a special purpose. There is a special purpose that he gave to each and every one of us, and that is to be a savior. That is to be a savior to your brother. That is to be a savior to your brother because you've got to be a doorway to him. He's got to go through you. He's got to be able to go through you. You've got to be a doorway to him. In order to be a doorway to him, you've got to be a savior to him. Well, Again, Brother Michael, what if I look at my brother and I see something there? This is what God has put you here for. He's put you here and he's fixed it where you cannot go in unless you go through that brother. So if there's a problem with the doorway, what do we do? We fix it. Hallelujah. We repair it. If there's a problem with the doorway, we fix it and we repair it. What do you mean, Brother Michael? You shall know them by the fruit they bear. Now, a good tree cannot bear corrupt fruit, and vice versa, a, a corrupt tree cannot bear good fruit. A good tree cannot bear corrupt. <clears throat> Just because there's a bad place, just because there's, that doesn't make the whole apple bad. That doesn't make it a bad piece of fruit just because there's a spot on it. Brother Michael, we're not allowed spots and blemishes. That's right. That's right. That's what your job is. Your job is to clean it up. Your job is to clean it up. God has made you a fruit inspector. Your job is to clean it up. Well, well what are you saying, Brother Michael? <clears throat> you have got to learn. You have got to learn to lift the lid off of your brother. Listen to me. 
Listen to me. You have got to learn to lift the lid off of your brother and your sister. And you have got to learn to reach down inside. You have got to learn to reach down inside and pull out the ugly. You have got to learn to reach down inside and pull out the ugly. You've got to learn to reach down in there and pull out the rot. You've got to learn to reach down in there and pull out that that is decaying, that that is defiling. Because to the pure, all things are pure. Do you know why God chose a mustard seed? How many have ever seen a mustard seed? I got one right here. I'll show it to you. It is so tiny you can't hardly see it. How many knows why he chose the mustard seed? He chose the mustard seed because of purity. You can cross all kinds of animals, all kinds of humans, all kinds of plants, vegetables. You can cross all kinds of things and come up with all kinds of things. But you can't cross a mustard seed with nothing. A mustard seed will not cross with anything. God chose it for its purity. It is your job to reach down into your brother and your sister and pull that that is defiling. Listen to me. That's not what goeth in, but what cometh out. It's your job to reach down in and to pull out that that is decaying, that that is defiling, that is just rotting away his soul. It's your job to reach down in there and to pull it out and get it out of there and then replace it and replace it with a beautiful, wonderful, holy, clean, virtuous things of God. It is your job to replace it with the beautiful, holy, virtuous, clean things of God. Well, Brother Michael, I can't do that. Well, you're going on the first bus, like the brother said. I don't know where it stops. <laughs> because if you can't do that, you're no good to God. You're, you're no good to him. That's all that he has. All that he has is people that can do that. That's all he has is people that can do that. Well, Brother Michael, I don't understand. I, listen to me. It's very simple. It don't take any talent. It don't take any talent. It don't take, all it takes is the Spirit of God. But now, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you can't do that. All it takes is the Spirit of God. All it takes is the Spirit of God to be able to do this. If you don't have the Spirit of God, then you, then you need to get it. If you don't have the Spirit of God, then you need to get the Spirit of God. If you have the Spirit of God, then you won't have any problem with it because it doesn't take any qualifications. It doesn't take any talent. It doesn't take any schooling. All it takes is just a little bit of understanding, which we're explaining to you right now, and it takes the Spirit of God. But without the Spirit of God and without understanding what you need to do, you can't do that. If you can't do that, you're no good to him because that's his purpose that he put you here for. Well, I, I just thought, Michael, I understood. I just thought that I was put here to live the best life that I can live before the Lord and uh, one day he's coming back to get me to live in a big mansion and all that good stuff that, you know, what in the world he want to do that for? <clears throat> what in the world he want to do that for? You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't done nothing for him. What in the world does he want to come back and get you and take you away and live in a big mansion and walk on streets of gold and all of that stuff for? He's got people right here that's undone. He's got people right here that's lost and undone. He's got people that needs him. He's got people that's lost and undone. He put you here to be a doorway to them. He put you here to be a doorway to them. He put you here so that they could see you by your example. By the fruits you shall know them. Now we can get to our part here. By the fruits you shall know them. 
It is by our fruits that they will know us. It is by our fruits that they will know us. It is by our fruits that they can look at us and see, whoa, and they say, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. There's something different about that brother right there. There's something different about the sister right there. I can't put my finger on it. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there's something that I got to investigate. There's something different about that one right there. I, I got to find out what's going on because I don't see it in everybody out there. I don't see it in every, There's a special quality there. There's a special quality there. There's a special virtue there that I don't see in everybody. I got to find out more about that. This is where we, this is where our exampleship comes in. This is where, this is where we are the doorway, the doorway for them. But it, it, we have to learn to reach down into these just as well. We have to learn to reach down into these that are lost and undone. Well, Brother Mike said a while ago, we had to learn to reach down into our brother that had problems in his life. That's right. That's your purpose. That's your sole purpose. That's the only reason that you're here. That's what God has got you here for. He's got you, he's got you here to be able to reach down into your brother and pull out the bad and replace it with the good. He's got you here to be able to reach down into the center and pull out the bad and replace it with the good. Don't you understand this is what Jesus done? This is what Jesus done. He said that I might be the first of many brethren. This is what he done. He reached in and he pulled out the bad and he pulled out the rot and he pulled out the mold and the fungus and he pulled out all the ugly and he replaced it with the beautiful, virtuous, wonderful, lovely things of God. This is what he done. He said that I might be the first of many brethren. This was your this is your commission. This is your commandment. This is what he's got you here for. We can't just go around from place to place and beat them over the head. We can't just go around from place to place and stamp our foot at them, and we can't just go around and tell them that, that they're all going to burn, they're all going to rot, they're all... No, our job, our job is to prevent that. Hallelujah. Our job is to prevent that. Our job is not to go around and condemn them. Our job is not to go around and condemn them and beat them down and tell them that there's no hope. They don't have a chance if they don't, if they don't conform and they don't stand up and they don't uh, step up the plate and they don't do everything just right. Go right in the flames of hell. Our job is to clean them up. Our job is to get the fish in and to clean them. Our job is to clean them up. Our job is to help them. Our job is to show them. We can show them better than we can. Oh, hallelujah. Now, now we got in trouble, didn't we? <clears throat> we can show them better than we can tell the sisters. We can show them better than we can tell them. But here's what you got to do first. Here's what you got to do first. You have got to accept the fact that Jesus reached in and that he pulled it out of you. Well, wait a minute, Brother Michael. If Jesus reached in and he pulled it out of you, just reach in and pull it out of them. Well, he could. <clears throat> and he could have just created him a whole world full of Jesuses to start out with and be done with it all. And what would he have needed you for? But he loves every one of you because you're unique. How many times have you heard Brother Michael talk about that? He loves every one of you because you're unique. He wants you to be the Jesus you're going to see. He wants you the God in the earth to them. He wants you to be what he told you that you could be. He wants you to be bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. He wants you to stand up and proclaim. He wants you to speak with authority like he did. He wants you to be able to reach in and pull them down out. 
He wants you to be able to reach in and pull them devils out. And he wants you to be able to replace it with the spirit of God. Do you understand? Do you know that you have the authority to impart the Holy Ghost? I said, do you understand that you have the authority to impart the Holy Ghost? You have the authority to impart healing. You have the authority to impart it. You have the authority to impart grace. He said, I've given you this much power, that much power. What did he say? He said, I've given you all power. He said, that you may know a few things, that you may know some things, that you may know all things. You have an option in the Holy One that you may know all things. Let me rephrase that. That's the way preachers quote it. That's not what it says. Look it up. It says you have an option from the one and you know all things. That changes it a little bit, don't it? The nuction from the Holy Spirit, and you know all things. You have you have been given all power and all authority to speak things in and out, call those things that are as though they aren't. Is that what he said? And those things that aren't as though they are, if you have the authority, if you know all things, you have all power and all authority to speak things in and speak things out, then where is the problem with reaching in there pulling them devils out? Where is the problem with reaching in there pulling them devils out and pulling that rod out? Well, well Brother Michael, what if I've got an unwilling recipient there? What if they don't want it pulled out of them? <clears throat> You're at the wrong fruit stand. I said you're at the wrong fruit stand. God don't have any fruit like that. He don't have any fruit that don't want the foul pulled out of them. He don't have any fruit that don't want the ugly pulled out of them. He don't have any fruit that don't want the rot pulled out of them. You're meddling at the wrong fruit stand. God's people, the children of God, God's people, they want the Spirit of God. They want the Spirit of God. They want the holy, virtuous things of God. They don't want to be what they have been. Do you understand? They don't want to be what they have been and where they have came from. But they are looking for a Savior. They are looking for a Savior. And they're being told a story they're being told a story. It's become a fable to them. They're being told a story that somebody hurt for them. And preachers are running around saying, it's right there, see for yourself. Pick it up and read it. <coughs> there was one that hung on a tree for you. Come and get it if you want it. If you don't, leave it alone and you'll burn for it. We have got to be able, we have got to be able to get to them. We have got to be able. Now, the only way you're going to be able, the only way you're going to be able to get inside them, the only way that you're going to be able to go inside of your brother, the only way that you're going to be able to get inside of your sister is through love. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get inside of them is through love. There is no other way. They are only, only. They've already been beat up enough. They've been kicked around by the world. They've been knocked around. Kicked around, knocked around by the preachers. They've been, they need somebody. 
they need somebody that can show them how it's done. They need somebody that can reach in there and pull it out and say, brother, it don't have to be like this. It don't have to be like this, sister. It doesn't have to be like this. Let me show you what Jesus can do. Let me show you what Jesus can do. But you got to reach down inside of yourself first. You got to reach down inside of yourself and you got to make sure that there's nothing in there. You got to make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to confuse them. You sure there's nothing in there that's going to confuse them. You got to make sure that there's nothing in there. You got to you got to work on this. <coughs> Pardon me. You got to work on this. You got to clean this up, you got to pull out, or well, Brother Michael, you said a while ago, God pulled that out. <clears throat> Before the foundation of the world, <clears throat> they're being told a story, a fable here, they're being told a story. Before the foundation of the world, before the Calvary that you even read about here, God had only done the work. The Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. He had already done the work. But without you, there's no manifestation of it. There is no manifestation of it. I tell you again, I preached it to you too many times. I tell you again, show me this Calvary right here. Show it to me. Show me the beautiful, beautiful mercies of God. Show me the beautiful, beautiful graces of God. Show me, show me this Calvary right here. Show me, show me all of these things. Brother Michael, it's right here. Right here, you can read it for yourself. You heard the brother this morning. You heard, what's it say, the written letter do it? <clears throat> I've said this so many times with uttermost reverence and respect. Let's take these right here and take them outside here and build a bonfire and set them afire. Did you do away with God's word? You ain't touched God's word. You've not touched God's word. This is our instruction booklet. And he stepped right on the front of it. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Don't try to get around it. But it says the written letter, kill it. But the spirit word, the spirit word brings life. The spirit word promotes life. I'm telling you again, you got to have the spirit of God. If you got a God, then you got no problem. You got no problem, but you cannot just go and reach down in your forehead no more. God won't tolerate that. He didn't set it up like that. <clears throat> he set it up to where Brother Greg's children won't listen to him. Ain't that right, brother? He set it up where Brother Michael won't listen to him. My children will listen to Brother Clifford. They will listen to Brother Clifford. Brother Clifford, Brother Don can get through to them. It's been proven already. Brother Matthew can get through to them. It's been proven already. I've seen them in the altar calls. I've seen these brethren get through to them. To me, God's got his son like that where nobody gets left out. I am my brother's keeper. He has made me responsible for your children. He has made you responsible for my children. He has made you responsible for each other's children, each other's loved ones, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews. He's made each and every one of you responsible for them. <coughs> he has said it where <coughs> you are the only one you are the only ones that can get through to them. This is why you can't deny your purpose. You deny that purpose. You forfeit that calling. He's got no more use for you. If he forfeits his calling, he forfeits his calling, he forfeits his calling, and I forfeit calling, then God's purpose is defeated. His purpose is defeated. So nobody gets out like that. Nope. They're calling. Daddy he has no more purpose for you. You've got to be able. You've got to be able to go in. But you've got to have the Spirit of God. 
if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're going backwards. There is no comfortable place. There is no there is no comfortable place. No such thing as standing still in God. It's not allowed in the mind of Christ. He's an ever-increasing God. If you're not forward, you are in fact going backsliding, they call it. So you have to, you have to be manifesting the Spirit of God. You have to be manifesting the fruits. You have to be manifesting the fruits in your own. If you're manifesting the fruits in your own life, then you are a prime candidate for being able to reach in out what is foul in your brother or in the sinner. You are the one that God can use to pull it up and to replace it with the Spirit of God. And you're not going to have to worry about them if they are a child of God. You will be very welcome. You will be very welcome if they are a child of God. <clears throat> if they are not, Jesus wouldn't even pray for them. Brother Michael, I thought he died for everybody. He said, I would that none perish, <clears throat> that all be saved. But he said, Father, I pray not for them of the world. He wouldn't even pray for them. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> the brother Michael is going to ask you a question. Today, <clears throat> today, if you meet your brother, <clears throat> before you get to the back door, if you meet your brother out in the parking lot, if you meet your brother at Walmart tomorrow, <clears throat> and you know there's a problem in their life, <clears throat> and you know that they're having problems, you know that they're fighting things, you know that there's things that can't be, you know, <clears throat> things that can't be right. Brother, this morning, things that are hurting them, things that they want to be rid of, things. <clears throat> Are you in a place with God? Are you in a position with God? Are you in a place with God to where God can use you? <clears throat> Are you in a position with God to where you can lift that top off and you can reach down into there <clears throat> and you can say, my brother, let me help you. Let me help you, my brother. This is how I done it. This is how this brother done it. This is how, let me help you, brother. <clears throat> together we can do this. I said together we can do this. Together we can do this. Oh, you can do that. You can kick this. You can, you can do that. You can handle it. Throw it away. Kick it away. Throw it away. Get rid of it. It's bad for you. Together we can do this. <clears throat> together we can do this I'm going to stand with you I'm going to hold you up I'm going to stand with you I'm going to work with you I'm going to do you I'm going to pray for you I'm going to fight with you I'm going to stay with you we're going to use my strength we're going to combine my strength with your strength and we're going to combine that with his strength and we're not taking no for an answer we're not taking no for an answer to have a victory. He said earlier, the one that's never known defeat, never given up a victory, together we are going to have a victory. We are going to defeat this thing. <coughs> Can you, are you in a position to do this? <coughs> Can you do this? Are you in a position to where you can do this? <coughs> With your brother, your sister, if you meet a sinner out there that wants the God, why, sure, brother, 
Sure, I'd lay hands and pray for him right there at Walmart. And then leave him be and never see him again. <coughs> Come on. Leave him be and never see him again, never see her again. And say, all right, brother, God's done it. All right, sister, God's done it. Pat him on the back three or four times and say, be on your way now. Live an overcoming life. God has done it. I'll see you over. You live an overcoming life and we'll see you in glory. God has done it. Brothers and sisters, it is a direct commandment that we carry the gospel to every living creature. We deliver it to them. We help them understand it. We help them work it. This is what they work their salvation by. <clears throat> with fear, we teach them how to work it with fear and trembling. We teach them how to work their salvation. <clears throat> we instruct them, we tutor them, we teach them. <clears throat> we give them our phone numbers and say, look, when you need to talk, even the AA people got that figured out. <clears throat> you need a sponsor? You need to talk to somebody. <clears throat> when that alcohol thing is toiling with you and, and struggling with you and, and <clears throat> that thing, that, that, you know, just call me. Just call me. I'll rush over and get you and talk to you. I'll rush you. <clears throat> Can you get there? Can you give them your phone number? Are you willing to get up and go pray with them? Are you willing to get up and go help them? Are you willing to? Are you willing to talk to them to help them? Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to reach out for them? Are you willing to reach in and pull it out? Or are you just? Well, brother Michael, you've heard it said: take a man down to the lake and teach him how to fish. Put him on his own. Brother Michael's going to close here in just a minute. <clears throat> if you are not, listen to me, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> if you are not in a position to where you can do this, you are failing God. You are letting him down. You are selling him short, <clears throat> and you are failing him. This doesn't make you a failure. <clears throat> It means that you need to get a hold of the Spirit of God because if you have a hold of the Spirit of God right, you won't have a problem doing this. If you have a hold of the Spirit of God right, you won't have a problem doing this. You won't have a problem forgiving. You won't have a problem keeping your mouth shut. You won't have a problem forgiving. You hear Brother Don preach beautifully words. And they bring life or they bring death. Dynamite. If you have the Spirit of God, you won't let that tongue that no man's ever flap away. You won't have a problem forgiving. You won't have a problem going the extra mile with your brothers or your sisters or with their children instead of calling them renegades. Yeah, you're right now, brothers. Brother's son over there, but the Antichrist. Whew, I tell you what, he's reprobate, renegade. <clears throat> you better look at these children like they're yours, because God's looking at them like they're yours. He made you a steward, and He placed you over them, and He put you over them, and He put you in the position you're in, gave you the understanding. He invested. <clears throat> As I close here, God raises up leaders. And he invests in these leaders. The voice of authority. The power of persuasion. The magic of influence. All of these things. <clears throat> There's life and death in your words and in your actions. But if you have the Spirit of God and you are where you need to be with the Lord, none of us is where we need to be. But if you're 
or where you need to be with the Lord to the extent that he can use you, that you are a tool. Are you a tool, brothers and sisters, that he can use right now, this minute, today? Can you delegate the authority to reach in and pull the devil out? of your brothers and sisters, their loved ones, their children. God would not have commissioned it and he would not have commanded it if it were not possible. If it were not possible, Brother Bob, he wouldn't have told us to do it. Are you prepared right now to go out of here before the day's out, be put in a predicament to where God needs you desperately. Did you hear what I said? <clears throat> How many knows he's a desperate God? To where he needs you desperately. <clears throat> Brother Michael, If he needs you before the day's out, can you be a tool? Can you be a tool in his hands? Can you get the job done? Are you willing to give it everything that you've got and not back down at nothing? Refuse to accept defeat Tell that devil that you will not quit coming. That you will have the victory and determine that you can show him better than you can tell him. And that you have the spirit of God to back all of that up. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Stand to your feet. <clears throat> it is just that simple. <clears throat> well, Brother Michael, <clears throat> what's the bottom line? The bottom line is that you are your brother's keeper and that you have one purpose and one purpose only here. If you have not learned to do this, if you do not learn to do this, if you're not prepared to do this, <clears throat> you start preparing yourself right now to do this, you have wasted your life. You have wasted your time. You're wasting your time coming to church. You're wasting your time calling yourself a Christian. You're wasting your time I said, if you have not learned to do this, if you're not prepared to step up to plate and to learn to do this as we speak, if you're not prepared to go there, if you're not prepared to make yourself available and to make yourself a tool in the hands of God, if you're not prepared to learn to do this, well, Brother Michael, I'm just going to coast. I'm just waiting, I'm waiting on the streets to go. I'm just going to coast. Well, you better get you some crayons and a color book. <clears throat> and you better color you a pretty picture of it because that's as close as you're going to get. <clears throat> you will not walk them streets of gold. Like I said, not done this. <clears throat> or you're not willing to do this and your mind's made up that this is not for you. The streets of gold are not for you, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I'm asking you right now to look into your hearts. Search your hearts. Search your hearts. Search your hearts. Search your soul. Search your very most inner being. And say, God... <clears throat> I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. Whatever it takes. Whatever 
it takes. I'll be your little David. I will bring Goliath down and I will take his head off. Whatever it takes, God, I will go the extra mile. I will run the race. I will go the extra mile, God. I will, there is nothing that I won't do if you will use me, if you will give me the chance, if you will give me the opportunity. I will go, God. Here's my hand. It's in the air. I will go. I will be your little David. Reach out for your little ones. I will bring your little ones to your feet, God. I will pull them out of the fungus. I will pull them out of the mire. I will pull them out of the cesspools of iniquity. I will bring your little lambs to your feet, Jesus. Whatever it takes, God. I will give whatever it takes. I will go wherever I need to go. I'll go into hell for them. I'll go into hell for them and I'll bring them back. I'll bring them back out of hell, God. I'll bring them back to Father, you and me and me and you, we won't lose one of them, God. Not one of them, not one of them, we won't lose one. I said me and me and me and me, we will not lose one of them, Jesus. Not one will get away. Brother Michael's telling you today, I know that I know that I know that I will go wherever he needs me to go. I don't care where it is that he needs me to go, I will go. Put me to the test. I will go wherever he needs me to go because I don't have a choice. I do not have a choice. I'm bought and paid for with a price. I'm not my own. I'm sold out of stock and barrel. Whatever it takes, wherever I have to go, whatever I have to do, I will go. I will do it, Jesus. Search your hearts. Search your minds. Search your souls. Do you know that you know that you're ready to go? Are you willing to go? Do you know that you're willing to go? Brother Michael, I've not understood. I didn't understand that. I've not understood. But I want God to be able to use me. I want to be able to go. I want to be willing to go. Brother Michael, I'll do whatever I need to do. Where do I start? How do I start? What do, what do I do? It's very simple, folks. If you have the Spirit of God, He's already infested everything in you that you need to do this. If you have His Spirit, He's already invested everything that you need to do this. And if you have His Spirit, then you will be willing if you did not understand Upon understanding, you will be willing to do so. <clears throat> Whatever you do, brothers and sisters, don't ever look at a motorcycle biker the same way again. Whatever you do, don't ever look at a junkie the same way again. Whatever you do, don't ever look at an alcoholic don't ever look at a horror. Don't ever look at them the same way again. You best be prepared to find that seed in there that's been planted somewhere down the, low, down the line, down the way by some preacher, by some Christian, by somebody. You better be prepared to find that seed in there. And if you can't find it, you better be prepared to plant one. If you can find it there, you better look for it. You better be prepared to water it. If you can't find it, you be prepared to plant one. You better be prepared to plant one. Because let me tell you something. <clears throat> this generation, this last trail ride, this third pull, narrow right here, <clears throat> this last thrust, what God is doing right here, the ones he's reaching out for right here, they're not going to look nothing like you. They're not going to look nothing like you. They're going to look a whole lot more like the bikers 
They're going to look, look a whole lot more like the harlots and they're going to look a whole lot more like the alcoholics and they're going to look a whole lot more like the junkies because God is tired of us trying to save the same ones over and over and over and over and over for a couple of years now. It's them out there that are lost. It's them out there that he wants. It's them out there that we're... I can't save Brother Greg anymore. He's as saved as he can be. He's as saved as he can be. So I'm going to tell you something. I've seen Brother Greg out there. He's not ashamed of God. I've seen him out there. He's not ashamed of God. I've been to the hospitals with him. I've been places to pray for him. <clears throat> I've had family members in suicide attempts and everything. I've been right beside him. He'll go after him. Brothers and sisters, bow your head. Jesus, wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Oh, God. Father, through all of my stumbling and all of my staggering, tripping over my words. Oh, God. I trust, Lord God, that somebody in here, somebody in video world, somebody will get a CD. Somebody somewhere will get a hold of what was said right here this morning, this evening, and that somebody will grab a hold and realize that we can't save God's people anymore. That it's God's people that needs to save the rest of them. Yes, Father, I said that we can't save God's people anymore. That it's his people that he is expecting to save the rest of them. God, the saying in the world, Uncle Sam just needs a few good men. You just need a few good men and a few good women that's willing, that will stretch out And say, here am I, God. Here am I. I will go. I will go into hell. I will go into the gutters. I will go into the ghettos. I will pull your little lambs out of these cesspools of iniquity. Father, I will go after them. And if I will do all that I can do and all that I know to do to reach out for your little ones, for your little lambs, for yours, for my brothers, sisters, children, and loved ones, then some way you will find a way to have mercy on mine. And you will have a brother and a sister that will reach out for mine. And by the same token, mine will be pulled in, Father. This is the only hope for my loved ones is that I'm willing to go after yours and that the others are willing to go after yours. Father, as everyone searches their hearts right now, as everyone searches their souls right now, you know who and who is not prepared. You know who and who is not ready. You know who and who is not willing. You know who and who is not interested. Oh God, have mercy. 
those that did not understand in their hearts right now if they belong to you they're saying Lord search me God I want to be a tool I'm willing Lord show me how oh God have pity on the ones that are not interested and that go away bored today Jesus I pray to God there's not any like that in here. As we turn it back over to our brother, Jesus. Oh God, don't let anybody walk out of here without being ready, without being willing, without searching and surrendering for there is no other way. This is the absolute. There is no other way, Jesus. We thank you. We commit your people blameless, oh God, back to you in the lovely name of your son, Jesus. Brother Greg comes to the piano just for a minute. If there's anybody in here 